Welcome, friends. Today we gonna talk about those iPad kids and see what the deal is with that. People love to talk about how this kind of stuff is bad for children. You hear it everywhere. We've even got whole new metaphors developing around this conversation, like screen time, or even calling a child an iPad kid is a metaphor that we didn't have when I was a child. But like, children have been playing on devices for the last 30 years or so. And while we're talking about screen time, television raised like three generations of adults. I mean, that shit was on non-stop. For me growing up in the 90s, it was rare that I ever visited someone else's house where television was not on, even if no one was explicitly watching anything. A lot of people would have just had it on all the time. And I get it. You know, it's background noise. It's comforting. But it does seem a little bit hypocritical for some of these people to be so concerned about a child having an iPad when they themselves watch hours and hours of television each day. I got my first Game Boy when I was about nine years old, and I took that thing everywhere. I really played it a lot. I would even play it at home a lot. And I had other video games. But sometimes I would just like to lay on the floor and play Game Boy. And I'm gonna be honest, when I look back at my childhood, just laying on the floor there playing Game Boy are some of my favorite memories. But also being honest, I really did take it everywhere, and there were some things that I missed out on because I was playing it a lot. You know, like the family goes out and does something, and today I just don't feel like engaging with that activity because I'm busy. You know what it is. And it wasn't like I never did anything and only played Game Boy. I played sports and did scouts and did all that other stuff that children do at that age. And I was a very well socialized child. I just like video games. And the device is only a medium. I like to read too. But like, instead of reading a story from a book, I could play Fire Emblem. The amount of text in some of these tactics games would translate into one of those books that's so big that they have to use those super thin Bible pages. So you're at a restaurant, and you see two kids sitting down being good. One of them has a tablet or a phone to play on, and the other is reading a book. Why are you so triggered by that child's device? It's basically the same thing. Neither one of them are socially engaging with their family at the table. And also, every family has a different dynamic. You don't know how their days go. Maybe this is the only time they get to have it. I mean, children only have so much patience. Older children should be able to self-regulate, but everyone develops at different rates. But young children, especially toddlers, I mean, you've got like 45 minutes max that you can sit them down in a restaurant. And also to be fair, when you've got really young children, there's certain places that you don't really go with them. I mean, I wouldn't prefer to take a small child into a sit-down restaurant, but like, maybe it's a special occasion, or like today's an important day. So like, you might not normally like to take your child into a restaurant, but today it happened, and so we're here now. But if I can give this child my phone for about 20 minutes so we can get through this without bothering anyone, then please, yes. Entertaining toddlers in a restaurant can be a lot of work. Sometimes you're lucky if the device even holds their attention, because they just don't want to sit down anymore. But also, screen time is actually better than nothing. And this is actually a very interesting discussion. So television has been around for some generations now, and it's been long enough that we can study the effects of long-term television use in developing children. And as it turns out, the adoption of the television has raised the average intelligence of Americans. And the reason for that is that it's better than nothing, as sad as that is. Not every child has engaging activities to occupy them on the day-to-day, -day. and some of them also don't get enough quality time with adults or other children either. And in those cases where a child would have no stimulation at all, television is actually better. But other engaging and constructive activities are of course better than television. And just like any device, the television is only a medium. I mean, we could watch cartoons or movies, but we could also watch something constructive. And moderation is of course the most important factor here. 
Like maybe you're just chilling at home, or maybe you've got some things you gotta do around the house, or even maybe you work from home. And even though you're like right there by your child, you can't be present and engaged with them all the time. And rather than let your child just be an unengaged silence for however long, let them have the tablet or turn on the TV. This is essentially downtime for them. It's whatever. Another thing that's really interesting about children adopting technology at an early age is how it develops their fluency to use it. So people like me that grew up in the 90s, I've been using technology my whole life. I've grown up with it. All sorts of different interfaces. Controllers, keyboards, touchscreens. I've been using this stuff as it's been getting developed. And in the modern world, that's an extremely valuable skill. You don't want your children to grow up ignorant of technology. Don't wait until they're a teenager to start teaching them about it. It'll be too late by then. Kind of like how being mechanically savvy with cars is an extremely valuable skill in the modern world. Like cars are a huge part of everyday life in America at least. And being able to diagnose or fix a problem on a car is an incredibly valuable skill. And it's the same for technology. Technology is becoming more and more integral to everyday life in the modern world. Even as a child playing on a tablet, they're already starting to pick up on a lot of these staple concepts when it comes to tech. Like data and saving files, downloading stuff, battery life, and even getting used to all various types of user interfaces. It might seem like it's just a coloring app on a tablet or whatever app they're playing, but all this time spent on their tablet is also some kind of experience. But it could also be brain rot. I mean, there really is a lot of brain rot in these app stores. But also, you as the parent have to moderate your own child's media. It's one thing if they're playing Angry Birds, but it's a whole different issue if they're watching, like, pregnant Spider-Man and Elsa videos. Another part of this discussion is that new mediums for media are always heavily criticized. Whatever the newest development is in children's media, it's always a hot topic. And that conversation is always that everything just rots your brain. The tablet rots your brain. Video games rots your brain. The television rots your brain. Even comic books were the scare of their day. Whatever the newest thing is, it rots your brain. You know, people who don't understand the new medium are always afraid of it in some way. And really, I think tablets are great. If the technology were then where it is now, I would have been all about that. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with a tablet. And of course, all the brain rot is on there too. But like, the vast majority of all media is not really that great. We tend to only really remember the good stuff when we look back at our past. It doesn't matter if it's games, or movies, or even music. I mean, go listen to about five songs from your favorite decade that you've never heard before. Probably all trash. And that's why you don't remember them. And these app stores are certainly full of garbage apps. You've got to curate your own child's media. And make sure that they're not playing something weird. Or even if you only want to just restrict them to a few specific things, this is another area where anything is better than nothing. And if you wanted to be really lax about controlling your child's media, something as simple as just looking to see what they choose to engage with from time to time goes a long way. They're far less likely to be on something really weird if you're likely to see what's up. Or at least you can correct them before it's too late. At the end of the day, it's all about moderation, just like everything else in life. Of course, too much of anything can be bad for you. And you get to decide how much your own child gets to have anything. And if you don't want them to have it at all, then you get to decide that too. But in the case of other people's children, that's up to them. And in the case of those children that are basically on it all the time, I mean, God bless. That's probably the only engaging stimulation that they've got access to. Or like the type of parents that those children probably have, that tablet might just be the best thing that they could be doing right now. And of course, screen time also isn't an all or nothing issue. It's a balance. But I will say, whatever opinions that you've got on this topic, you should also embody that in yourself. 
Like some of these adults are so concerned about someone else's child's screen time, and then they themselves are also chronically on their own phone. Or like, they want to complain about the kids of today watching videos on their tablet, while they themselves are watching TV like basically all day. I mean, it's whatever. People should enjoy whatever they want to. And none of this stuff is inherently bad. Like, television isn't bad, phones aren't bad, and tablets aren't bad either. They're pretty cool, actually. We just have to keep everything in moderation.